Recently on the channel we posted a little video that talked about how you created a very simple stabilised gimbal on a CC3D and one of the common things that was asked by the NASA 32 pilots was how do you do that on the NASA 32? Well this is the video that's going to explain that. So thank you to all the subscribers that asked for this, this is for you. So what we're going to do is use this very simple rig here on the bench to kind of show you what we're doing. We've got a little piece of balsa wood here. We have a NASA 32 connected to it with a zip tied LiPo at the bottom so I can hold and move everything at once. Little receiver at the back and we have a servo connected to the NASA 32 with a little camera popped on the side of it for demonstration purposes. Now what I'm going to do is go through how you set this up. It's relatively straightforward so that it automatically stabilizes the camera and then the last step will actually connect the camera to one of the input channels on the radio so that you can also change the tilt of the camera by using one of the channels that you have. So Bear with it, we're going to go through this at a reasonable pace. We're going to assume that you've already watched the other NASA 32 videos. I'll put a link in the bottom to the NASA 32 series, which this is part of. So if I'm talking about something that you don't understand, it'll be explained in the previous videos. So we'll jump onto the netbook and we'll talk about the first two or three things that we need to do to get this working. So here we are in clean flight. The very first thing we need to do is turn on camera stabilization. If we go all the way down in the configuration tab, we have this little tick here next to servo tilt for a servo gimbal. We need to click save and reboot. Now, what that actually does when you've enabled that is it moves the pins along in the NASA 32 outputs. So whereas normally it goes 654321, as we've seen in our previous videos, by turning on servo tilt, it actually moves the four controls for the motor along a couple. And the first two controls, then the first one is for the pitch servo and the second one is the roll servo. So if we just go back and look at our bench, here you can see the servo is actually plugged into what used to be motor one. So that's one of the things that you have to be aware of. Obviously that now means that we can't use this in a hex configuration, but if you already had your NAS 32 wired up, one of the first things you've got to do is just move all of the connectors down a couple of pins so that none of the ESCs are plugged in the wrong place. So once you've done that, next thing we need to do is then go into the modes and we'll find we have a new mode available. This one is called cam stab and I would recommend you do what I've done here which is you just make the range as big as possible or you just put the range where you want it. Now this is actually connected to my auxiliary switch on the receiver so you can see the little yellow thing flicking around but for the purposes of the demo I'm just going to make it as wide as possible so the camera stabilization is always happening but you could change this so that the camera stabilization is only turned on in specific flight modes. Go down to the bottom click save if that's worked then you'll notice that the cam stab indicator will go green and then we're ready for the good stuff so we're going to go into servos now we only have a pitch servo installed here, it's a very simple gimbal identical to the one that we did in that CC3D video. So here we have the standard settings, we have the midpoint, we have the minimum and maximum positions and then we have the ability to relate the tilt of the camera to a channel and then the direction and how much it's moving. Now if I just show you what how this is working right now, if I move it, I don't know if you can see that but the camera is kind of moving, but it's actually moving in the wrong way. So if you find that the camera is being compensated in the wrong way, that's dead easy to fix. We'll just change the direction. So rather than being a positive number, we'll change it to a negative number and vice versa. So I'll go down to about minus 30. Click save to send it to the board. And now we can see that's kind of working but it isn't quite working well enough. So that 30, although we're in the right position, is pretty close. We might need a bit more. The other thing that I'm not very happy about is at the moment, you can probably see here that the camera isn't pointing straight out. 
Now we can adjust that too by changing the midpoint. So I'm going to increase the midpoint by maybe another 50. Let's just see what that does. So I'll make the midpoint 1550. Click save. So I'll move. I would say it probably needs a bit more, about maybe another 40. Okay, that's very close. I would say probably another 30. Right, that's better. That that camera looks more like it's flat to me. And again, as I'm moving the gimbal around, it isn't quite going far enough. So what we need to do is increase that rate number. So it's minus 30 at the moment. Let's just double that to see if that will help. We'll take it up to about minus 60. Click save again. Now we'll try our gimbal. That's looking a lot better. I would say that's probably overshooting very slightly now. I'd probably drop that down to maybe 50. And this is the great fun with this. It is a little bit iterative. That's pretty much spot on. It might be a couple away from perfect. So now we have a, gim a very simple single servo stabilizing a camera on the NASI 32. And that's how we do it. So we need to first of all go into configuration. We go down to the bottom. We turn on servo tilt. We make sure that we've moved our motors along to the different outputs. Then we go into modes, make sure that we have cam stab enabled and we've selected a range that that will operate in. Then we go into servos and now we can change the pitch and the roll servos. Now the other thing I know I'm going to be asked is how do you then make it so that you can control this camera from one of the channels on the radio? And that's what these buttons here in the middle are for. So I'm just going to connect this at the moment to my elevator channel. Let's just figure out which one that is. So if I go into receiver, move my elevator, that's channel two. Okay. So if I go back into servos again and pick channel two and then click save, if I just bring my radio into the shot as well so you can kind of see it. As I move my elevator, I am now also adjusting the camera as well. Now obviously you wouldn't actually assign it to one of the sticks. What you'd actually do is put it onto an auxiliary channel or maybe a slider at the back of the radio. Now the nice thing about this is, is even if you set up that the, if you move it using the stick, it will then still maintain that new orientation as you fly the craft around. So hopefully that helps those of you that are looking to do this on a NAS A32. It's relatively straightforward. Just remember those three or four things and you can have a very simple stabilized camera that will just make sure that you're not staring at the ground when you are going into fast forward flight. And you can also assign it to a channel on the radio so that you can then control that camera and look up and down or change the amount of pitch that you're getting as you're flying around. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless 360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.